I'm here today with Brian Mahalik, uh, who's a trademark and IP attorney. Brian, uh, tell, tell us what you've come on the show to talk about today. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having me, Lee. I appreciate you uh, coming down here and spending some time with me today. Um, you know, what I, what I wanted to talk about today is um, kind of some new applications of the Defend Trade Secrets Act, which is, um, it's about two years old now, but it's basically a federal cause of action um, concerning a uh, trade secret law. And what this means basically is if you're an employer and you have someone who stole trade secrets, it offers you an opportunity to file in federal court as opposed to the state court statutes. Right? Yeah, I think that's right. Um, and kind of taking like a step back, you know, prior to 2016, um, what we had when we were talking about trade secret law were really a bunch of different states that had their own specific type of trade secret statutes. Um, some of these statutes were in fact pretty similar and, and shared a lot of uh, consistencies, um, but there were others that kind of had their own nuances and, and, and what that, that meant was that trade secret jurisprudence wasn't completely harmonized um, and it made it a lot more difficult to account for situations where um, uh, we, often, we often encounter in the digital age where uh, misappropriation of trade secrets happens across state lines, or if we have a scenario where an individual who misappropriates a trade secret resides in one state, and the server in which they access to take the trade secret is in another state, um, we found that there was a lot of clunkiness with trying to figure out which state law would apply and how we could best go forward to making sure that the owner of the trade secret um, could, could get restitution appropriately. So really what we have now in 2016 is a federal cause of action, as you stated correctly, um, that allows us to go straight into the federal courts and manage uh, trade secret litigation from that vantage point. And I think it's, it's careful to, uh, it's important to say also that what we're having is uh, not, a, not a federal law that preempts state law, but it supplements it. So both, are, both, both can be um, acted upon. So here in Illinois, we have the, the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act that is often one venue. Why would someone who's contemplating filing litigation against an employee who stole trade secrets here in Illinois, under what circumstances would they want to try to pursue the Defend Trade Secret Act uh, federal option as opposed to the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act? Yeah, well, it's really going to depend on the particular fact scenario that's at issue here. Um, the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, you know, that, that generally is tailored to somebody who uh, goes into a computer without uh, authority to do so or oversteps their bounds and uh, oversteps their access. So it, it's a little bit of a different cause of action. Um, but then again, there are situations where you have a fact pattern where uh, an employee could, could run afoul of both statutes, both the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act as well as the new uh, Federal Defend Trade Secrets Act. So what, what are some of the advantages for someone who pursues a claim using the Defend Tr Trade Secrets Act? Yeah, I think one, uh, there's several advantages. Um, I kind of hit on some of them earlier when we we're talking about um, kind of this discord among uh, different state laws and how they're actually applied to certain fact patterns. Um, but one advantage is uh, that you get access to the federal court system. Um, previously, when you have a state law, you, you can do some things to get the claim into federal courts, but it takes a little bit more, a um, little bit more effort, and you, you oftentimes need to show that there's diversity or you need to tack on a federal cause of action like the Computer uh, Fraud and Abuse Act in order to do so. Right now, with this cause of action, we're actually allowed to file in federal court um, right from the get-go. And you know, there's a certain bit of strategy and advantage for employers to do that um, from an efficiency standpoint, from a uh, practicality standpoint, which allows um, you know, to redress this misappropriation as soon as possible because you know, we're dealing with a situation many times that when you have a trade secret that's misappropriated, you need to act very quickly. Otherwise, it can be uh, disseminated and, and ultimately lost if, if things aren't done to stop that. But I understand the act requires you to present your case of sorts as to why there's an urgency to seize this information when you're trying to get the evidence. Uh, what would you try to do before you file your case to bolster 
your your chances of getting a, a judge to grant you relief in terms of obtaining your trade secrets and getting that information back? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I think what you're getting at is the the federal uh, the, the Defend Trade Secrets Act has a very special and new um, kind of prong to it. It's a it's a mechanism for a civil seizure. And what that basically says, it gives the court the power to, and it's ex parte, I should say. So it allows you, if you feel that your trade secret is misappropriated, to go to the court ex parte and explain to the court why um, you, you need redress and you need to either get your trade secret back or have it deleted off someone's computer who, who, who misappropriated it or whatever recourse is appropriate. Now, this is new to the 2016 statute, but there are some very specific hurdles that you need to uh, you need to get over. The, the statute itself says that this is really only for um, uh, extraordinary circumstances, and you have to show that other equitable uh, means would not would not serve your interests, like a preliminary injunction or a temporary restraining order. So it is kind of a a, a, um, a, a special uh, remedy that's offered, and I think you know we've we've had the statute for about two years now. And there's only been a handful of cases. There's one in particular where the judge, in fact, did grant uh, a civil seizure order. And one of the reasons was because uh, they found that uh, failure to do so would cause the trade secret to be disseminate, disseminated and, and ultimately lost. And really, the, the next step there is to get the Federal Marshal Service involved, and they will go in and actually reclaim that trade secret or delete it or, or make sure that appropriate uh, recourse is made. Now, when you're filing, would, would you encourage your clients to have an independent forensic analysis done with the affidavit to, to support their claims? Do you think that would help uh, the, the likelihood of actually getting that relief? I, I, it's, again, it's going to depend on the, the situation, but I think kind of what you're getting as is when you're dealing with something that is taken from a computer. You know, we've dealt with situations where uh, and, and I think these are becoming more and more common in the digital age, where uh, an employee will do something with his computer um, before he quits and goes to a competitor, he will uh, transfer a file or copy a file or do something he's not supposed to, and the employer finds out, and, and if they believe that there is some type of misappropriation or the employee took something that he, was, he or she was not supposed to, um, you know, they may have cause of action under this, this federal action. And to your point, um, a lot of times when dealing with computers, you do have to get a forensic expert involved um, so that you can actually know what was happening because people sometimes think that they can delete something or they can transfer it or hide it. And you know, I've dealt with this enough times and I, I know you too, uh, you, you have too, Lee, is that um, you know, it's very, very difficult to actually um, cover up your tracks unless you really know what you're doing. And that's really where a forensic expert can help when, is when somebody tries to cover up their missteps, their tracks, and if you get the right expert involved early, then you can at least have that evidence to really show um, the fact pattern and what was going on and why you are entitled to, uh, to, to remedy under this, this federal act. Hey, so Brian, uh, can you tell uh, everyone some of the benefits uh, financially of filing under this act? Well, uh, I think what you're referring to is, is this act has one other wrinkle. Um, it, it's, it's known as the whistleblower provision, and basically it allows employees to blow the whistle and disclose uh, what could be a trade secret in very limited fashion um, if they believe that there is some wrongdoing. Uh, on the flip side of things, um, employers, if they want to take full advantage of this act and maybe receive attorney's fees should they win or exemplary damages uh, in certain situations, um, they're now tasked with including this whistleblower provision in uh, employee agreements, meaning they have to make note of it and, uh, and specifically instruct the employee that this is an option and the mechanisms for which, which, uh, which apply. So to fully benefit from this, people should revisit their paperwork, their confidentiality agreements and whatnot with their vendors and employees. Uh, is that something that you could assist people with? Yeah, absolutely. That's something that we're happy to talk with you about, and, and if need be, we can help help and assist. Great. Well, thanks for being on the show. All right, Lee. Thanks so much. Take care. All right.